from the letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And this is the voice. When the right time arrived, God sent his son into this world, born of a woman, subject to the law, to free those who, just like him, were subject to the law. Ultimately, he wanted all of us to be adopted as sons and daughters. Because you are now a part of God's family, he sent the Spirit of God into our hearts, and the Spirit calls out, Abba, Father, the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And each one of you is a Word of God for the people of God. Invite all of you who are able to stand and to greet one another with words of welcome and peace. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. 
You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face. The scripture in chapter 5 of the book, God Unbound, is about Paul leading people to change and the anxiety associated with change. And I can identify that as Kent Peterson leading me to change my seat in the audience to stand before this microphone. Much anxiety with that change. <laughs> <coughs> Dear Sacred Journey, words from John Burens. Blessed are you who yearn for keeping more than, for deepening more than escape, who are not afraid to grow in spirit. Blessed are you who know the work of the church is the transformation of society, who have a vision of beloved community transcending the present, and who do not shrink from controversy, sacrifice, or change. Change is frequently related to journey. Early in my life, I did not realize that I was on a spiritual journey. I just thought I was seeking to find out what I should be doing in life. What was my purpose? How should I relate to persons and a variety of issues? Was the church helping me? Who or what is what I call God? And am I doing things right? If you can identify with these questions, then I believe you and I are on spiritual and sacred journeys. And these journeys and questions help us with changing times. There have been a lot of changing times in my life's journey. I went to medical school. I married Anne. We were blessed with two daughters. I was drafted into the Air Force. I joined the faculty of the medical school. I became a full professor. I switched from a specialty division of endocrinology and metabolism to join the division of general medicine or primary care, something you don't do in academia. These and other changes 
were with significant anxiety. Yes, that does include marriage. <laughs> and each change seemed to complement and deepen my journey. Today I'm limiting my story to church experiences with change. Over 40 years ago, in the 1970s, Ann and I and a group of us regular church attending young families at North United Methodist Church in Indianapolis were having difficulty relating to the liturgy of traditional church worship. We couldn't find relationships of the words in the service to our daily lives. Does this sound familiar to some of you? Our clergy were very helpful with information and resources on worship and brought in consultants on contemporary worship. Finally, we decided that in addition to traditional worship, we would have an entirely lay-led worship service. That was a big change. We divided ourselves into small groups of about four or six and planned a service over six weeks. During this time, we met weekly to plan, and the groups were staggered so that we would have a service every week. We would start with a theme among our group, such as forgiveness, freedom, poor, the earth. Sometimes it took two weeks just to agree on a theme. <laughs> we had an easy time finding hymns and scripture Old and New Testament to match the theme because of extensive word indices. We included contemporary music when appropriate. And also to match the theme, we wrote opening words, prayers, sermons, responsive readings, and benedictions. This meant a lot of work beyond our weekly meetings. We wanted the words that would relate to our spiritual journey to both assure and stretch our thinking. And there was fear about how the service would actually turn out. But it worked. At the end of six weeks, we had a contemporary service called Celebration Service. It was well attended. It, it wasn't perfect, but was appreciated by almost all of the families. But there was a problem. <laughs> After we had planned and put on a celebration service, we painfully realized that very soon we would have to be a part of another group and another service over six weeks. At that time, I was teaching, seeing patients, and doing research on the faculty of the School of Medicine, and Ann and I were raising two daughters. So the celebration service was too much for folks who had other jobs and families. The service died out after about a year or two as folks got tired. Oh, but what a journey it was. We learned about all of the components of traditional worship and why they were included. We became closely acquainted with others in the congregation that we saw each Sunday. And the work stretched our spiritual journeys by enlarging our concept of God, receiving inspiration, personal comfort, challenge, and instruction. And so it was that our spiritual journey was fed through a changing time. Now, fast forward to another change with fears. That was our move to Minnesota in 2006 to be with daughters and grandchildren. We chose Hennepin Avenue because of recommendations and because it was a reconciling church. And then we discovered Sacred Journey Worship. It was similar to our celebration service in Indiana, but with stable staff leaders to reduce the workload of lay people. And there seemed to be a component at each service that added to our spiritual journey. 
It wasn't always the service, but sometimes it was a touch, a smile, or a word from others in the congregation. Again, our spiritual journey was enlarged through changing times. Have we found nirvana? Well, no. <clears throat> no, because it is a spiritual journey and that never ends. And no, because times are still changing. For each of us, we will have changing times. At Hennepin, we are having multiple administrative changes and two changes in ministerial staff. And in the wider church, there are major changes involving how to minister to LGBTQ persons. And in the country and in the world, there are changes in climate, immigration, racism, homelessness, health care, and on and on. And witnessing these changes cause us fear and anxiety. So how do we journey through today's changing times? The words of Carolyn Adams Miller that appeared for many Sundays in our bulletin are helpful to me. Your life is a sacred journey and it is about change, growth, discovery, movement, transformation, continuously expanding your vision of what is possible, stretching your soul, learning to see clearly and deeply, listening to your intuition, taking courageous risks, embracing challenges at every step. You are on a path exactly where you're meant to be right now. And from here, you can only go forward, shaping your life story into a magnificent tale of triumph, of courage, beauty, wisdom, power, dignity, and of love. May these words and thoughts help us as we continue our individual spiritual and sacred journey together through today's changing times. Peace and grace. <clears throat>